Good day everyone. Once again we are back together and uh, thank you for being patient with us um, at a time when you know I wasn't physically well. Uh, yeah thank you for bearing with me and uh, of course we'll always try our best you know to just be the plug when it comes to maths and science. All right, so if you are new to the channel, please welcome and uh, please just consider subscribing. Just hit that subscribe button and please do it now. All right, and for those of you who need assistance in mathematics or physical science, of course, we've got uh, um, even our upgrade classes uh, that are currently going on. And you can always uh, just send us an email and our email address is info at mlungisengosi.co.za. All right, so we are continuing with analytical geometry. And today I'm going to be looking at uh, circles. Uh, and of course, as I did say, analytical geometry is still, you know, a part of geometry uh, where we look at, you know, just the analysis uh, or analysis part, uh, you know, analytic. Uh, so in this case, it means that we are dealing with numbers, we are calculating. And so today I want to look at... Um, you know, analytical geometry when it comes to circles. Right, now, first of all, when it comes to circles, what we do know is that the standard equation, or rather, let me start with a, a, um, a circle that does not have, that has its center at the origin. So in this case, if I have a center, or rather, if I have a circle that has a center at origin, then the standard equation is x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared okay so this would be a circle uh, in this particular case that would have its center at the origin so meaning that uh, their center here would be zero and zero the coordinates of the center would be zero and zero however in this case um the circles that we deal with are not always at the origin and so when the equation, or rather when the circle is not at the equation, uh, or at the origin rather, uh, the equation now becomes x minus a squared plus x, uh, uh, rather y minus b. Um, so that's y minus b squared. Now there are quite some important things that I need to show you here. Uh, squared, which is equal to r squared. Now please note, in this case, you already have a negative equation uh, or rather a negative sign inside the bracket. So first, what it means is that the center of the circle, okay, so the coordinates of the center are A, all right? So the X coordinate would be A and the Y coordinate would be B. Please note that they change sign uh, the moment we take them out of these brackets, okay? Um, I'm just going to make an example just now. And please remember that the radius in this case would be the square root. Of course, uh, remember this is r squared at that equation there. So the radius would be, uh, in this case, the square root of r squared, okay? Right, let's take a, an, an example. So suppose I've got an equation um, let's say maybe they give me an equation that would be x plus 2, okay, uh, squared plus y minus 4, okay, squared, which is equal to 25, okay? So in this case, what would be the equation, uh, or rather, what would be the coordinates of the center of this um, uh, 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 circle? So in this case, it means that the coordinates, note, okay, so the center of the circle would be, okay, at minus 2, okay, and I'll show you uh, why we got that to be minus 2. So in this case, uh, so it would be at minus 2, remember I said it changes sign, and 4. So that would be the coordinates of the center, right? And now what would be uh, the radius of that circle? Well, all we'll simply do is say, well, the radius would be the square root of 25. And in this case, it means that our radius would be five units. Okay, right. So uh, obviously that's R squared there. 
and so the radius would be the square root of 25 which is 5. now how we get that is that uh, simply remember that the standard equation was x minus so this is the same as saying if it's x minus 2 this is the same as saying it's x minus a minus 2 squared right and y minus a positive 4 um, in this case so as a result uh, that squared which is equal to 25 and so just remember that that's why we had the center at minus 2 and 4 in that case okay because remember the standard form or of the equation uh, has got that minus sign in there okay right so um, I want us to uh, take an example where we are given the equation and where we are going to talk about uh, uh, completing the square and perhaps what I want to do before that is just to show you quickly how to complete the square all right uh, just a, a little reminder and then I'll do that when it comes to the circle all right so let's look at a situation where we have to look at uh, you know uh, uh, completing the square so i want to solve for x by completing the square i want to just show you that quickly uh, let's take a simple equation okay um, of course i'm not going to go uh, in detail i'm going to produce a lesson probably later on on how to solve or how to complete the square uh, but i want to do this for the uh, purposes of us you know learning about circles so if i take a simple equation let's say we've got x squared uh, minus 4x uh, plus 3 um, is equal to 0 and we want to solve for x by completing the square all right so what we normally do is we will take um, x squared now please i want you to listen carefully so we'll take x squared minus 4x and we take everything else to the right hand side so in this case we we leave only the x terms so we will take three to the other side and so that becomes minus three right now how you complete the square is that you always take the middle term please listen carefully uh, first of all we ha we have to make sure that the coefficient of the x squared term is one okay so that means that if you've got a coefficient like three um, uh, in this case, you would uh, obviously divide by 3 throughout, right? So that you make sure that the coefficient of your x squared term is 1. In this case, it is 1. Uh, so now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the middle term. I want you to please listen carefully, right? So take the middle term and you divide it by 2. So I'm going to do it uh, here on the side. So take the middle term and divide it by 2, right? so um ah, let me take a brighter color so that's minus four over two right so it's half of the middle term squared okay so it's half of the middle term squared all right so in this case i'm saying minus four over two uh remember that would give us a uh, right that would give us a, a minus two but if i take minus two squared what does that give me it gives me four right so in this case i want you to note i'm going to add this on both the left and the right hand side so i am going to say well i'm adding a plus four but remember so that the equation remains exactly as it was so what i do on the left i also do on the right hand side okay so now I have got, uh, um, in this case, a perfect square on this side because I can factorize my left-hand side and simply say, well, this is x minus 2, okay? Now, note, where do I get that minus 2? So, once you've done this, you see what you've, you have there. You can put there, so this is x minus 2 squared, right? And this is minus 3 plus 4. Uh, in this case, that would be 1. Okay. So x minus 2 squared, okay, uh, which is equal to 1. So what did we do? We just factorized this. Okay. So at the end of the day, we've got uh, x minus 2 squared, which is equal to 1. 
And then now, how do we solve this? We will now take the square root on both sides. Uh, so take the square root on both sides. Uh, so what do we have? X minus 2 is equal to, now please remember when you take the square root, you've got plus or minus and the square root of 1 is 1, right? So X minus 2, uh, this is when we are solving, right? X minus 2 is equal to minus 1 or x minus 2 is equal to 1. And of course, uh, if you're solving for x, you can say x is equal to 1 here or uh, x is equal to uh, 3 on the other. Okay, right. Um, did I get the signs right? Um, yeah, I think I got, uh, I got the signs right. Okay, so in this case, um, that is how you would solve or, or rather complete the square. Right. And the reason I'm showing you this, this is the most important part uh, because we're going to do this when it comes to circles. Right. Um, we're going to take the equation of a circle. All right. And uh, we want to complete the square. So please remember uh, the part that we need to get right is this one here. All right. Uh, where we are taking the middle term and we are dividing it by two. And in this case, we are squaring. Right. So. What, I'm, what we're going to do just now is I'm going to complete the square, but this time we are going to be taking the equation of a circle. All right. So when they want us to find the coordinates. All right. Now let's take an example where they give us an equation. Uh, they say determine the radius and the center of the circle with equation x squared plus y squared uh, plus 4x uh, plus 6y. Uh, that 6y minus 10 is equal to 0. Now, when we look at this, it's not in the standard form. So we want to get it back to that standard form. Remember, x minus uh, uh, a, all squared, uh, plus y minus b, uh, all squared, and which is equal to r squared. So this is not in standard form. And this is where we are going to now introduce the completion of the square. Now, please stay with me. So the first thing that you're going to do is group all your x terms right so in this case i've got uh, x squared uh, plus 4x okay so those are my x terms and then i am also going to group my y terms so plus y squared plus 6y all right now what i'm going to do is the constant term in this case i'm going to actually take it to the other side so this is going to be equal to a positive 10 of course it changes sign when it goes to the other side and this is where now we're going to complete the square please remember what did we say we said well we, we need to first of all make sure uh, so this is going to be x squared plus 4x okay now note for the x term what are we going to do we're going to make sure that um we put a number there, but we need to make sure what that number is. So plus 6y. Okay, so I'm going to leave a space there. And what did we say we do? We take the middle term, which is that term over there. Okay, uh, the one there and the one there. So let's start with the one for x. We said we take the what we call the x term or the coefficient of it and we divide it by 2 and we square it. So this is going to be minus, uh, sorry, positive 4 rather, uh, over 2. We divide it by 2 and we square it. What's the other one? We take 6, positive 6, over 2 and we square it, right? So what does that give us? 4 over 2 is 2 squared and 6 over 2 is 3 squared. Can you see? So now I want you to please note. Uh, so it means here I am going to add 2 squared, which is 4. So I'm going to add it as is there, plus 2 squared, uh, plus 3 squared. It makes it easier when you do it like that, okay? Okay. Um, but remember, on the right-hand side, what do I have? I have got that 10 there. But remember now, I have added uh, 2 squared. And what is 2 squared? 
we've added that 2 squared, okay? But we have also added that 3 squared, okay? Remember what I did on the left, now I am doing on the right-hand side, okay? Uh, I hope that makes sense, right? I'm just going to remove this uh, so that you... Now, this is the part where we are now going to open the brackets and just, uh, um, you know, try to factorize uh, in a sense. Now, I've left it deliberately in that format so that it's easier for you to remember what to factorize it to, okay? So, in this case, so this is the same as x squared plus 4x plus 4. But so that you know what to change it to, I leave this deliberately as that so that you know in our bracket, we're going to have x plus 2 all squared. Can you see? Plus, if I, I, I um, factorize that, that's going to be, again, y plus 3 all squared. Okay. So just remember what I added there, in this case, squared. Okay. And please remember, I haven't changed anything. Um, x squared plus uh, 4x plus 4. Uh, is the same. In fact, if you were to expand this bracket, uh, in this case, you would you would get that back. I hope that makes sense. I hope I'm making sense. Right. And then on the right hand side, what do I have? I've got 10 uh, plus 4 uh, plus uh, uh, 9. Okay. So uh, just uh, please note. So in this case, we've, we're saying we're adding 10 plus 4 to squared and plus 9. Okay. So that would be our uh, um, uh, the number that we have. So in this case, what do we have? We've got x plus 2 squared plus y plus 3 squared. This is going to be equal to, so that's 19 plus 4. Uh, and in this case, that would give us 23. So therefore, what are the coordinates? So this uh, um, uh, circle has got a center at, note, it's going to be minus 2. That's the x-coordinate of the center, and the y-coordinate would be minus 3. And what would be the radius of the circle? The radius of the circle would be the square root of 23. Okay, so I hope that makes sense for everyone, and um, uh, we will be able to 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 know to answer that you know in future uh, should we have a question like that um you know I, I do want to try another one okay uh, so that you know we just get into the rhythm and then what i'm going to do is uh, of course we're just going to talk about just the last thing uh, you know the equations of a tangent and we'll call it a day all right now let's find the equation or rather the coordinates of the center of this circle as well as the radius of it, all right? So once again, we said we're going to complete the square. What's the first thing that we do? We arrange all our terms, uh, the x, we group the x terms together. So that's going to be x squared plus 4x, okay? And then uh, group our y terms together. So that's going to be y squared uh, minus 2y. And we said we take the constant term to the other side, and this is going to be 4, right? And then what did we say? Uh, I'm going to do this in yellow again. So we said we take the middle term, that's 4 over 2, we half it, and we square it. Remember, that's positive 4, okay? And so what does that give us? It gives us 2 squared. And then what about the y? Uh, we've got minus 2 over 2 uh, squared. We take the term, we, we, we half it, all right? We divide it by 2 and we square it. Uh, and in this case, the, this gives us minus 1 squared. So what I'm going to do is add onto there. Okay, so this means I'm going to add that. So this is plus 2 squared. This is plus, okay, so remember negative 1 is, uh, 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 rather negative 1 squared is 1. So that's plus a negative 1 squared, but I'm going to leave it like that. But remember, I've added something that wasn't there in the equation before. 
so now i'm going to go to the right hand side and say well whatever i've added on the left so this is plus two squared so i'm going to add plus two squared and i'm going to add plus uh, negative one squared so that's negative one squared okay right sorry i ran out of space there right so in this case uh, that would be uh, what i will add on the left as well as on the right hand side now let's talk about um now uh, factorizing okay both are brackets and i said the reason i left it in that format i could have said uh, x squared plus 4x plus 4 but it's so that it becomes easier for you to now factorize because you know whatever this is this will be in your bracket so this will be x so you take the square root of that you take the square root of that okay so x plus 2 squared can you see that and then plus when i go to the y square root of that is y and then i know minus one can you see that squared because i'm taking from that there right uh, so square root of that square root of uh, you know that term and that term and you just simply square them okay it's easier to remember that way uh, so in this case uh, let's look at the right hand side so we've got four plus four uh, plus one so that would give us nine and so what would be the center of our circle so our center okay the coordinates of the center would be minus two and one remember it changes sign and what would be the radius of the circle that would be square root of nine and it means that it would have a radius of three all right so i hope that was clear all right okay so we are simply going to move on now to talking about tangents all right so um going back to the equation of a tangent of course we've touched this uh on this rather in geometry so remember what we call the 10 red uh, uh, theorem um and it simply just says that the okay first of all let's talk about a tangent so a tangent is a line that touches the circle once right so in this case please remember all right um the 10 red theorem simply says if we draw a tangent okay and a line that is from the center meaning uh you know if we draw a radius there uh i don't know why my line is so squiggly all right so if we draw a a, a radius or a line from the center okay and uh, that line touches the tangent so wherever it touches the tangent or in this case wherever it intersects with the tangent we know that they will form a 90 degree there they'll be perpendicular to each other right so keep that in mind when it comes to the tangent and so this is what is going to inform how we find the equation of a tangent okay to a circle um, in this case, once they give us a coordinate, for instance, uh, they say, well, they intersected a point uh, A and B. Remember, what this simply means is that if we can find the equation uh, of this tangent here, uh, or the gradient, rather, of the, uh, uh, of the radius, in this case, we know that the gradient of the tangent would be, um, uh, uh, you know, the inverse. Remember that uh, whenever we've got two perpendicular lines uh, we know that if we take their uh, the product of their gradients that we would get negative one so if let's say our uh, uh, radius let's say they meet at a point p there okay and this is um you know this is tangent rs so i know that the uh, the product of the gradient of op multiplied by the product of rs okay we know in this case that this would give us negative one all right and of course we've got a point of intersection and we can use that to find the equation 
So I want us to take an example that we're going to use, but please just keep uh, uh, in mind. And that is why we kept on saying that when it comes to um, analytical geometry, it still is an extension of geometry. So you need to kind of know uh, your theorems in order to be able to answer questions. All right, let's take an example. All right, so let's take this as our example. It says, determine the equation of a tangent to the circle, uh, x plus 1, uh, y minus 3, uh, all squared, uh, uh, which is equal to 16. So first of all, what we do know is that, oh, but they said through the points 2 and 5. So we've got a circle. Uh, I'm not really going to draw it very accurately. And uh, nor am I going to put it uh, specifically on the Cartesian plane. So if this is our circle and, uh, you know, that's our tangent. Uh, sorry, it should touch the circle once. Okay, so we know, first of all, that the coordinates of our um, center is going to be minus 1 and 3, positive 3, right? And we know that where they meet, um, they meet at the at two and five. Okay, so let's call our center O. Let's say that point there. Okay, if they didn't give it a label, let's say that's point P where they meet. Okay, so now I can find the gradient of OP. So I can say, well, let's find MOP, and this is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Remember, we are trying to find the uh, equation of our tangent in this case, right? Uh, let's call our tangent, uh, let's call it QR. So in this case, what it simply means, let's take, first of all, OP. Uh, I'm going to take this as my x1, y1. I'm going to take that as my x2, y2. So that means that y2 is 5 minus uh, y1, which is 3, divided by x2. Now, please, I want you to note, uh, is 2 minus x1. Uh, x1 is minus 1. Can you see that? Okay, so please keep that in mind. Um, so I'll say, well, 5 minus 3, that would give me 2, uh, divided by uh, 2 minus a negative 1, uh, that would be 3. So I would get 2 over 3. So that would be, so the gradient of OP is 2 over 3. But now, Remember now, which means that the gradient of OP multiplied by the gradient of QR, which is our tangent, okay, should give me negative 1. So what does that mean? It means that 2 over 3, okay, multiplied by uh, the gradient of QR is equal to negative 1. And of course, what do we do in this case? Um, just remember that you just simply invert it and you change the sign, right? Uh, so, of course, to try and simplify that, say multiply that by 3 over 2, multiply by 3 over 2. So, in this case, that cancels with that, that with that. And so, the gradient of QR would be negative 3 over 2. Just remember, we change, uh, we invert and we change the sign. So we know that's the gradient of QR. But remember that QR passes through the point 2 and 5 anyway, right? So now to find the equation, okay? So I'm going to say, so once again, Y is equal to our gradient is minus 3 over 2 X plus C. And guess what I'm going to do? course we're going to substitute the points 2 and 5 so where I see x so I'm going to just simply substitute uh, the coordinates 2 and 5 okay into that equation where I see x I'm going to put 2 where I see y I put 5 so 5 would be minus 3 over 2 times 2 
Okay, that's my x value plus c. And in this case, of course, if we simplify that, that cancels with that. And so I get my c value. Uh, and so I've got a minus 3 there. If I take it to the other side, it becomes positive. So it will be 5 plus 3, which will give me 8. So the equation of my tangent would be y is equal to minus 3 over 2 x plus 8 okay and of course you could have used the y2 minus y1 formula okay and um, you can try that uh, of course if you don't know what i'm talking about it means you haven't watched our previous video and uh, you can just refer to that on uh, um, analytical geometry and then you'll see that we we've covered that okay right so that is it when it comes to finding the equation of a tangent all right, and I'm going to leave our lesson here. I don't want to make it super long. And of course, I think uh, what we will start doing from now on is just looking at uh, past questions, all right? Um, and maybe also talk about the equations, uh, uh, you know, um, of a locus and, and so on and so forth. All right, but I'll leave this lesson for now, all right? And uh, of course, if you haven't subscribed, please just hit that subscribe button. And uh, uh, of course, that notification bell as well, so that you are alerted every time that we are posting a new lesson. Yeah, some of you uh, have actually told me that, hey, it's stressful when they get those notifications because it tells them they must work hard. If nothing else, uh, you know, we're trying to do that uh, to the best of our ability so that you guys really, really uh, are able to get the best of results. Okay, um, uh, and please don't forget to share and you know just hit like when you've liked this lesson and tell as many people as you can about our channel okay we want to grow and uh, remember our target is fifty thousand. okay uh, and we are unapologetic about it because we know that we are giving good quality when it comes to content otherwise from me for now i'll see you guys next time sharp sharp